Hey guys, Jeff the Nature Guy here at Zoo, Mont <gasps> at Zoo Montana, and I got this guy, the leopard, behind me, and I've got this beautiful snake, corn snake here. And what am I talking about having a leopard and a snake? We're talking about adaptations. Now you guys probably learned about adaptations in school, at least I hope you have, maybe even from us, and why adaptations are so important. Now first of all, you remember what adaptations are, right? They're things that animals have that help them survive in the wild. And that could be anything from coloration to special eyelashes to special teeth to special paws so many different things. In fact, on this leopard, we, I can find so many different adaptations. The spots obviously being one of them. These special ears, this big giant nose, obviously those big giant teeth help them eat meat. And adaptations basically are there to help the animal survive wherever they're from. Now, there are some problems with that sometimes because as we all know, everybody's born different. And sometimes some animals are born without the right adaptations, if you can believe that. And that's why Johnny's here. Johnny was born a little bit different. He was born albino, or melanistic we call it. It's a big giant word. Basically it means he was born not the color he was supposed to be. And so the problem is, an animal like this, in his native habitat, he tries to go hide in the grass. Do you think he's gonna blend in well with brown and green and, 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 and woody grasses? Not at all. No, he's gonna stick out like a sore thumb, meaning a predator like a hawk or something like that, maybe even a uh, bobcat, would see him easily and then boom, pounce on him and eat him up. So that's why when you go to a place like a zoo or a sanctuary, a lot of times you see a lot of albino animals because they don't have a good survival rate out in the wild because they're just simply the wrong color for the habitat that they're found in. It's really a bummer for the animal. Now get this, there's also other adaptations that can go wrong, not just coloration, and it can be so many different things. And obviously if an animal is in a fight and it loses its canine teeth, something like this, it's going to be detrimental to that animal. It's not going to be able to catch prey and therefore it could die out there. So adaptations, even though it seems like it's just something that's given to you, not always. It can be deadly if you don't have the right adaptation for the environment that you're found in. Now last but not least, the other bad thing is when an animal is put into an environment that it's not supposed to be in. Sometimes they can survive, but a lot of times they don't. So what happens is people get animals for pets, they realize maybe that animal is not a good pet and instead of finding some a new home for it, they release it out in the wild. And in some cases that could have detrimental effects not just to that animal, but to the other animals that are native and adapted for that environment. For example, in Florida, the big giant pythons down there that are in the Everglades, people release them. Well, guess what? They're taking over down there. They're killing out the other snakes, alligators, other birds. It could be bad stuff. So adaptation, so important. You don't want to mess with them. But if something goes wrong, we'll try to be here to help them out the best we can. So guys, until next time, I'm Jeff the Nature Guy here at Zoo Montana with Johnny the Corn Snake and... Bruce the Leopard, see you soon.